All right, well, today we're going to be doing some more upgrades and refurbishing to my gooseneck enclosed car trailer here ahead of race season. We've done a bunch of upgrades to this thing already, but we've got really the best one saved for last. I'm really excited to get these knocked out and get this thing sorted out 100%. So let me get it hooked up, get it drug out, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So this is my 32 foot ATC aluminum gooseneck car trailer. So we use this for our race program. We've had this thing for about two years now. We've put a ton of miles on it. We've taken it all over the country and it has been amazing. We've worked on it. We've tinkered with it. We've refurbished things. We've upgraded things to make it kind of our ideal trailer for what we do. And you really only figure out that list of things by doing things over time. You know, the more we use the trailer, the more we find little nuanced things that we can improve and upgrade to make the trailer and the whole setup more efficient for us for race weekends. And we finally come to the end of that list. We just a couple weeks ago knocked out a bunch of upgrades. We added heavy duty batteries to help with being able to leave the lights on longer and not having to worry about that. We added some trailer TPMS sensors that interface directly with the truck so we know our trailer tire pressures at all times, along with this rear facing camera so we can see behind the trailer when we're backing up and some extended ramps so that we don't have to take the bumper off the car to get it in the trailer. And now it's time to knock out the last few things to make this thing 100% exactly what we want for what we do with it. So let me show you what we've got to go in this thing and what the plans are. All right, guys, before we get too deep into today's video, I wanted to talk to you about today's video sponsor, Factor. So Factor has been legitimately life-changing for me. I've talked to a number of people who have tried it after seeing it in the videos, and they've all said the same thing. It, it literally is life-changing, you know? I've tried so hard, so many times in the past, to shift to eating healthy. I want to eat healthy. I hate wasting a ton of money on takeout, and I hate eating crappy food all the time. You know, the, the food you put in is, is all your body has to thrive off of. It's the fuel for your body, and if you're constantly feeding it subpar fuel, well, you know, what kind of results do you expect to get? So I wanted to make the shift, but just in practice, it never works out. I can never make the time to go to the store twice a week and, and cook meals and finish working early. I'm always gonna choose being out here in the shop, working as long as I possibly can to get projects done, to get ready for events like the one we're going to this coming weekend and make that happen. And because of that, the reality is I just have not been able to make it work no matter how hard I've tried. Up until Factor. Factor delivers fresh, never frozen quality chef inspired meals right to my door that are ready to eat in less than two minutes two minutes i mean i could work until 9 30 and be eating at 9 32. it's incredible and really one of the biggest things for me is just how good everything tastes i'm not someone who traditionally eats very healthy and i'm just kind of used to that but yet i can eat any sort of meal from them with any ingredients whatever it is everything i've eaten from them has been absolutely delicious i've enjoyed eating it and i felt great after eating it and it's ready in two minutes like it's just such a win-win situation i would highly recommend it i definitely recommend trying it out so if you're interested in trying it out head to factor75.com or click the link below and use code taylorjust50 to get 50 percent off your first factor box it's definitely worth trying out seeing for yourself firsthand what you think of it, if you like it, if it's worth it for you to uh, stick with. That being said, we don't have a lot of time and we do have a lot of work to get done. We're on a bit of a time crunch. So I'm gonna go ahead and get back to work, but definitely check it out, link below. So the first project we're gonna tackle is this winch setup from Midwest Race Cabinets. Now they're the same company that makes the cabinet kit that we use to outfit the trailer. When we got the trailer, it was an empty shell. It had nothing in it, no cabinets, no anything. 
and we got their cabinet set up and completely built out all the cabinetry in the trailer so that we have storage for all our small items, keep things organized. Now, a winch is something I've wanted to do for a long time. Now, the problem is traditionally, with a winch setup, you have to sacrifice counter space. Usually they go back in the cabinets, you have the winch line running through, and you lose a lot of cabinet space because of that. We have kind of maxed this trailer out on storage space, so we can't really give up our cabinet space for a winch. And that is why we went this route. So this isn't a traditional winch kit. It's really, really cool, really clever design. So instead of having to go in a cabinet and take up a bunch of valuable real estate, this setup uses this floor box. So we're gonna recess this box into the floor. The winch is going to be in here. When we're not using it, we close the door. We're not losing any space. We're not losing any storage space. So if we do wanna use it, we'll pop the door open, winch the car in, and then close it back up like nothing ever happened. So this is huge. I've wanted to get this actually since I came across it when I ordered all the cabinetry. Um, we're finally doing it. The reason we need to do it now is because my C6 Corvette here, which is what we've been competing in, has a incredibly aggressive seven inch quad disc clutch in it. Now, if you know race cars and clutches, you know that is a very, very aggressive race only clutch. It is not meant to be driven in a casual manner. It's not really meant to be slipped. So it is really hard on it and a lot of the other drivetrain components to try to slip it while driving this car slowly up into the trailer. Not to mention the track width on this thing barely fits in between our fenders. So it's always a bit of a guessing game trying to ramp this thing in there. So winching it in is our best bet, but obviously to do that, we need a winch. So this should be a huge improvement for us since we load this car in and out every day when we're gone for a track weekend. That's a lot of wear and tear on the clutch for really no reason. So. Here's a look at the kit. So you can see this flips down out of the way when you're gonna winch, it flips up. So the winch line goes through there. Got our lid, got our winch with a synthetic rope. We've got a hard mounted switch if we wanna use that. And we have a remote control, which obviously will most likely be using this because then I can winch myself in from inside the car and steer it in easy peasy. So this is gonna be huge. I've wanted this thing for a long, long time and I'm glad we're finally getting to it. So. That being said, the first thing we need to do is determine where we want to mount the box and cut a giant hole in the floor <laughs> to put it in. Let's get to it. All right, so we're debating where to put the box. The start of it needs to be on a beam. So our one beam is here and our other beam is about right here. So we need to put the box here or back here. Now, the downside with putting it back here is the winch is gonna be kind of all the way drawn in to get a car, a long car like the vet in it should still have enough room to pull it all the way in without it bottoming out. The downside with doing it up here is that A, we put an electric scooter there and we strap it down and we always put it in first because it's a pain to lift it up through the door. Uh, so then we wouldn't be able to access the winch box. B, we'll have to cut up that E-track there to fit the winch box, which we use the E-track to strap the scooter down. But C, really the biggest thing is we come in and out of the trailer to get to the toolbox quite often. So we'd be stepping on that box anytime we come. This is the area we probably step in most in the trailer to get to all the cabinets. So then we're gonna be stepping on that box every single time we come in here. So we've decided on putting it here. There's sacrifices either direction, but this seems to make the most sense. So we need to figure out exactly where the beam is and go ahead and start getting our hole cut. We are gonna have to trim up this E-track, start drilling and cutting.
going to crew, see if it fits. One box. Throw it in. Throw it in there. Fingers crossed. Oof. A little too tight. Yeah. Okay. Is this one quite a thing? Square. Yeah, the box is in. As you can see, it fits nice and snug. There's barely any play. Now we basically need to put everything in it before we put it in here. It'll be easier to mount the winch, mount the relay box, get the wiring running out. Basically get everything done that needs to be done inside the box done, and then just drop it in, draw our holes. Yeah, sweet. All right. Mint. Got a giant hole in the fourth trailer. <laughs> Weird feeling for sure, but A1, let's uh, let's go assemble this winch box. So our goal is to basically assemble anything and everything that is going to go in this winch box on the bench before we install the box in the trailer. You know, things like bolting the winch in are gonna be a lot easier when we can access both sides instead of having to have one person under the trailer trying to feed the bolts in and the other person up top trying to hold and maneuver the winch around. So we decided we wanted all this to be self-contained. So we're gonna mount the relay and everything in the box with the winch. That way everything's in one place, roughly out of the weather, everything is kind of self-contained in this one area. So we started running and routing the wiring. We do have a little more wiring length than we need since the relay is mounted so close to the winch but I'd rather have a little too much than a little too little so we test fitted the lid to make sure it was gonna fit with the relay in there and that we could secure it blue came by to uh, offer some emotional support and check in on the progress to make sure we were gonna be done in time for dinner and then we went ahead and committed to mounting the relay as well as the remote receiver we wanted to get it secured so it's not flopping around in there and with that, uh, basically everything that needs to go in here is in here. So now we just need to drill our pilot holes. So since we're gonna be self-tappering this thing in, if you're self-tappering through two pieces of metal, it will screw into the first piece and basically just push it off the second piece. So if you wanna do that, you basically gotta drill these pilot holes so the screw can go through them and just drill into the piece you're trying to attach it to. Makes life a lot easier. All right, our winch box is officially complete, ready to go in the trailer. We got all of our wiring done. We got our leads running out here which are gonna go to the battery. Pretty happy with how it came out. We've still got a little bit of room left over in this corner if we wanted to put you know, an axle strap or whatever we might use with the winch in the box so it's all together. So all you gotta do is drop it in, screw it down. It's a nice piece. It is a nice piece, I'm, I'm happy with that. I can't wait to try it out. So anyway, if we wanna try it out, I gotta quit jibber jabbering. We gotta get this thing mounted in the trailer, so let's get to it. Those out. Sorry. My fingers usually Right out, step on it. Step on it. Oh god. Oh, oh, oh. So I bought this trailer from a company that transported show motorcycles. So they had this e-track installed before I got the trailer and they used it for basically mounting and strapping the motorcycles. Now I originally wanted to remove it. I didn't like it. I didn't think I would use it that much, but it turns out that we have used it quite a lot. It has actually been very handy. We can strap pretty much anything anywhere. So we want to retain as much of this as possible, but obviously we have to get rid of some of it to fit the box. So now that the box is installed, we've got the e track all trimmed up we can put it back in and see how it all looks and I've got to say I'm not super happy with the way it looks with it just stopping and ending so we decided to go ahead and basically cut the leftover pieces of e-track that we cut out and notch them essentially around the box now this doesn't do anything they're not going to be usable but aesthetically I think it looks better 
good. Beautiful. Beautiful. Now it just blends in. A1. Winch. Install, except for the wiring. I still gotta do the wiring tomorrow. Uh, but let me show you what the next thing we have is so we can at least eyeball how it's gonna be to install before we call it a night. The next item on the agenda is arguably more important than the winch. This is something that we have needed and talked about getting pretty much the entire time I've had this trailer. And it's one of those things that we forget about it and then when we're at the track, we think about it and we realize, oh man, I wish we had that. Remind me when we get back, I'll order one and then I never ordered one until now. I finally ordered this and uh, it should be very, very helpful. Let me show you. Better just jibber jabbering on about it. That's a nice box actually. That's a nice box. Yeah. <laughs> That's why you've always got eyes on the boxes. All right, so this is also from Midwest Race Cabinets. This is a trailer step. So I think it'll slide, slide out and allow us to have a step into the trailer. Now let me show you why this is so important. It's something that we've needed for so long. So normally trailers have basically a cutout right here. So when you open the door, there's kind of a built-in step. Uh, but this trailer being aluminum, the frame has to be so much thicker that there is no built-in step. So it's a pretty big step up into the trailer, but it gets worse because when we get to the track, we generally unhooked the truck from the trailer. So then the trailer's up even higher. So it is just, it's a big step up to get in here every time. And uh, being able to have a step to get up there without having to really do the full Captain Morgan, would be nice. So we need to measure and see if the frame's gonna fit. We might have to shorten it or change it. I'm hoping the trailer's kind of like a standard width. So I'm on the beam here, the end of the beam. No, nothing. Yeah, that's not gonna work without welding in a beam. Yeah, so that's would go to the, but then our step would be offset to the rear. All right, well, we'll uh, mold this over tonight and come up with a plan tomorrow. So the first thing I wanted to tackle the next day before Josue got there was wiring in the winch. I knew this wasn't gonna be the most fun process scooting around underneath this trailer, so I wanted to get it done and knocked out so that the winch install was done and dusted. Now, unfortunately, the wires weren't long enough to reach our battery. It's a pretty long run from where the winch box is up to our battery, and we obviously want to keep it under the trailer so it's not an eyesore. So I had to basically put an extension wire on and then start securing it under the trailer. We want to do a good job here because otherwise this is one of those things that will come back to bite you later on when the wiring comes loose and it's flopping around and dragging on the ground. Trust me, I know I've made that mistake with trailer wiring. You got to take your time. So I went ahead and pulled the cover panel for what is essentially the utility box of the trailer. This is where the jacks are and we fortunately already have a hole going up right by the batteries for some other wiring we did on the last batch of upgrades. So I just had to route it through there, put the plate back on, and then come up top, put an end on it, and get it connected to the batteries. We've got a lot of wiring going in and out of here, so it's tricky to keep it tidy, but we're doing our best. All right, winch is wired up, so now it's time to test it out, see if it works. <laughs> that from like the shop door. Oh, I gotta walk it back in. Nice. All right, cool. That's job done. We'll obviously test it out when we load the car in here.
So we went ahead and put the trailer step on a jack and jacked it up into place. Now we had to make some compromises here, both with its location in general, but we don't have a second full beam to attach it to. So we're basically basing it off the first full beam and then using two different beams to attach the further side. Now it's not an ideal scenario, but I think it'll be plenty strong enough for what we're doing with it. It should hold up. Right? I mean, it works. It does the job. Try it out. Nice. Well, we have our trailer step. I know what you're thinking. Why is it not the center of the hole? And it is the beam spacing. This is as far up as our beams go. If you look under here, that's the end of this beam structure, and then it's just this. So maybe down the road, we'll try to fabricate something to shift it forward, but I mean, for all intents and purposes, it really does what it needs to do. You have a step at the center. Win, win. Right, yeah, we got a bench. What do you think, you happy? How many times? I, compared to... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, true. How many times have we talked about doing this? Pretty much every event, right? Yeah. Every event, it's like, ah, you gotta remind me to get the dang step. That's why we couldn't just give up. Yeah, no. We had to try something. Yeah. So. Yep, there was no giving up. All right, push it in. Push it back in for us. Show them what to do. And I walk around with the pin. Got the pin. All right. It's his first time. Yeah. Can't take oh, it. There you go. Oh, boom. See, not too long. Not Step long. put away. Sweet. Good Pretty shit. happy with that. All right, so with that, our trailer project's pretty well wrapped up at the moment. Next thing to do is to try it out. Put the car in here and uh, take it to an event. So that's just what we're gonna do. But before we can load this thing in the trailer, we do have a few things left to do. We're gonna be doing two separate events this weekend out in Texas. We're doing LS Fest and a Lone Star event. We're doing two separate competitions. So it's gonna be a lot of driving. We need to make sure all the fluids are fresh. Everything is good to go to handle that much driving in one stretch. So we've got to do that, our traditional prep work. We've also got some changes that we're going to make. Uh, one being with the braking system, we're going to change out our handbrake cylinder size to try to tighten up the handbrake a little bit. Got to get our chill out system back in, bleed the brakes. There's, there's a little bit to do, but we're just going to start hustling, get it knocked out, and then we can try to load this thing in the trailer, see how the winch does, and get everything packed and ready to go. So. You know the deal, enough jibber jabber, let's get to it. So the first thing we wanted to do was go ahead and just get all the wheels off. Fortunately, we've got this thing parked on the quick jack so we don't have to move it around before we can even start working on it. Now, I wanted to go ahead and get the chill out setup put back in first. It's a pretty easy thing. It's meant to be easily swappable. We took it out at the last event because we hadn't been using it since it hadn't been that hot out and it makes it way easier for passengers. It gives them a lot more leg room, but we're coming into hot event season. It's gonna be hot it gets super hot in the car so we need to make sure this is set up and working this cools water that runs through my shirt and helps keep me cool while i'm sitting in what is effectively an oven of a race car they're all just super hot inside so with that we need to do a full nut and bolt check race cars rattle and they vibrate everything is solid mounted all the suspension joints are spherical bearings there is no rubber gush to, to soak up vibrations everything rattles everything comes loose you basically have to check every nut and bolt on the car between every race weekend. Otherwise, you're gonna have stuff come loose and fall off. So it's a really tedious and time consuming step, but it is a absolutely necessary step if you wanna run a car like this. It's, it's a lot of work, man. There's a lot that you don't see. So with that stuff out of the way, we went ahead and got our handbrake cylinder swapped out. Again, this has been on the agenda for a while. The handbrake has not felt great. And having a handbrake that doesn't feel great, it just doesn't give you a lot of confidence and the ability to really trust that the car is gonna do what you want when you're going out and trying to win these battles against these tough competitors. So this is something we really needed to do. Uh, a little bit tedious and it requires us rebleeding the brake system. But fortunately, I recently finally decided to get this pressure bleeder kit. And I was skeptical on if this would work well or not, and I gotta say, worth its weight in gold. 
It basically pressurizes the system, it refills the fluid. So all you gotta do is crank the bleeder, wait till there's no more air bubbles, close it, and you're done. I'm so glad I finally got one of these. So that made that process really easy, and then it was really just getting everything else ready. We've gotta fill our fuel jugs. We went through about 25 gallons at the last event, so we've got quite a few of these to fill, and then finish up our fluid changing. We've got the transmission fluid changed, We've got the diff fluid changed, and the last thing is the engine oil. Since this car has a dry sump, we have to basically fire it up, get oil cycling through the system, so that way the oil levels stabilize, and then we can drain the oil out of the tank. All right, well, we got our entire to-do list finished up. We've got all new fluids, fresh engine oil, fresh transmission fluid, and even a fresh diff fluid, replaced all of it. So that's all sorted. And then we got our cylinder swapped out here. Very, very happy with this. So it being a little larger, we should have a little less throw, but we still have a good soft pull. So it should lock up really easily without a ton of effort, but also not bottom out like the other one was doing. This now feels Great, feels exactly like it should. So really happy with that. I wanted to make sure we got that done before this event because we are gonna be entering between 110 and 120 miles an hour. It is a very fast track. It really just depends on how long they make the run up. This car makes a lot of power. You know, I was entering at over 100 in my Miata when it had a 5.3 making 350 horsepower. going fast <laughs> when you're going fast you want a handbrake that's going to work not one that's hit or miss it's uh it's not very confidence inspiring if you don't know what's going to happen when you pull it so definitely need to get that done but that being said we need to drop this thing off it's time to uh test the trailer out and uh see how everything works all the upgrades we haven't even tested the ramps out since we did those so we'll see if we have to take the bumper off there's a lot of unknowns this is the first time loading this thing up since all the upgrades that's right yeah so first things first we got to get our tires packed up top, so let's get to it.
All right, car's in. The winching worked great. Uh, we also got these new straps last time. It's something I've been meaning to do for a while. They use the E-Track and go over the tire. Uh, this is the way to do it. If you can strap your car over the tire, they don't come loose. When we strap to the chassis, we always have to check them every, every stop and they're usually a little loose. But with these, we checked them every stop on a long drive and they stayed tight the whole time. Obviously, you really need E-Track to be able to do it, but it's nifty. The winch also really nice because as you can probably kind of see, it is super, super tight in here. I mean, the tires basically rub the fenders all the way in. And that's what that's narrowing the track with. I guess now that we have the winch, we could pull it in backwards if we wanted to, if we wanted to get some more angle out of it. We're limited on angle to keep the track width down to fit it in between the fenders. So anyway, really happy with the improvements. Even just the simple thing like those straps has been a really nice improvement. The winch worked great. It's so nice with it being so tight, being able to slowly bring it in and check it. I'm stoked. I mean, that was pretty much the last batch of things that we uh, we had planned. I mean, I'm glad we were able to kind of make the step work. Really all that I might want to do still is add a solar panel, but uh, feels good. This is stuff that we've had kind of on our mind and wanted to do for quite a while now. And right, perfect timing right before race season. So that being said, I'm tired, I'm sweaty, it's hot. We're gonna call it a night. We're gonna go ahead and in here. Let me know what you guys think of the trailer upgrades and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing. I hope to see you next time. It's gonna be some fast, good driving. You should check it out, Let's give it a shot. But anyway, goodbye. Give it a shot. Give it a shot. I don't like it. You don't like it, I promise. Everything's fun. And this is gonna be a crazy fast track with some good competition. So think about it, think about it, mull it over. See you later.